What? <clears throat> what is that? What is that? Why is it there? What the f No. No 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 Hello guys, welcome back to Rush to Rush, my name is Miguel and on today's second episode of Shame in my Cabinet I'm gonna tackle Eldar Guardians, one of the boxes that I had over there. In order to achieve some inspiration I had to make sure that I opened the crack book for this and none other than the Heavy Metal Painting Guide by Mike McVeigh for Warhammer 40k. Outstanding book. These books nowadays go for outrageous prices like everything from the Middle Hammer era and it gives you enough inspiration to paint these beautiful miniatures which, which by the way, depict very interesting anatomical choices for what an armor should be. Oh my! Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all! For those of you who are absolutely new to Warhammer 40k, these guys, Eldar, are an ancient race of aliens who were an advanced civilization even before the humans took to the stars. The funny thing is that Eldar, being one of the most ancient races in the system, it is also one of the oldest ranges in the system. The miniatures are way, way aged compared to the average that we have in 40k. And when you compile the data, you start to see a pattern over here. Spiky Bits shows it very clearly. And I obviously start to wonder what happens in Nottingham about this. <laughs> alright, alright, but enough with the conspiracy theories. We're gonna start with Ally Talk. These Guardians, as you can see, they have a nice uniform with contrasting colors, both yellow and blue. And for the blue, we're gonna start with Talisker Blue. And with a big brush, we're gonna paint the whole Guardian with it, with the exception of the helmet, because we're gonna try to avoid painting it as much as we can, so we don't have to recover color later. We're gonna follow up with Lavado Azul from Game Wash. And after we're done with this, we're gonna let it dry so we can move on to the next step without staining things. Sometimes it's a good idea to let your miniatures dry flat, so the ink and the washes do not pull in certain areas too much like the fit. I'm gonna use my white paint. This is a mixture between white paint and uh, white ink and in that way it runs very smoothly. And then I started highlighting things but you know what, I don't think that this is actually in the best interest of the speed. But if you want to do that, sure, go ahead. Make sure that you clean all the gems, the weapon, the helmet, etc, etc, because you're gonna need to paint them later. So they need to be pure white. For the helmet, I'm gonna paint it with Yam and Yellow, but if you have Kazan or Yellow, it will do the same job, absolutely fine with that. And for the Shuriken Catapult, I'm gonna use Skeleton Horde, leaving the barrel on top in white, because I'm gonna paint it later with a different color. In this case, it's going to be Griff Charger Grey. I'm also experimenting with Griff Charger Grey to paint certain areas and shading a little bit here and there wherever I think that the armor will benefit from an extra depth of darkness. After that I'm gonna use Black Templar to paint the barrel and that small cable that goes between the elbow of the Guardian and the weapon and we can move now onto the gems. I have made a video about how to paint gems for Eldar, Elves etc. You can check it on the description below but it's very easy here. I'm gonna use Blood Angels Red then I'm gonna use Flesh Terrors Red and last, Volupus Pink by painting different layers on the gems. To finish it off, we're gonna put a small dot of white in the opposite corner of each gem, as you can see here and there, and with that, we can call it a day for this Guardian. For our next Guardian, we're gonna do somebody hailing from the craft wall of same hand. These guys have a very red armor and they also have a nice white helmet that we're gonna start painting with apothecary white. This is a very light grey and it's gonna give us the foundation for later on further pure white highlights. 
for the weapon, the shuriken catapult, I paint it with Grip Charging Ray and I also give a coat to the face mask in the helmet. I wanted the red to be very vivid and I started with a coat of very light Magos Purple all over the armor. You might see that there are some stains in yellow, the idea behind this is that I wanted to build the red from yellow but I changed my mind and I had to clean that. I also paint the weapon now with a coat of Black Templars that is gonna shade it further and make it look black. And now I'm gonna use my red but in order to get the pigment shaken and all mixed together I use my Vortis mixer that by the way I put the link below if you want to get one of these. It has been with me for more than two months and it's working fantastically well. For paints such as Ultramarines Blue which has a very heavy pigment it is a marvelous thing to have. As you can see now I'm further highlighting and cleaning those things that have to be white. For the helmet I'm using my mixture between white uh, ink and white paint and I'm also cleaning all the gems and doing a few highlights on the shuriken catapult because I wanted it to be a little bit more contrasting. I'm gonna use once again black temper a little bit more diluted just to make sure that I put an extra layer inside the areas that I want to darken further but I leave those gray highlights on the outside without being covered. This is a very easy guardian to paint. Now I'm gonna paint the jewels using first of all warp lining then I'm gonna use orc flesh and I'm gonna finish off with dark angel screen. All this is explained in the other video with gems but as you can see the procedure is very simple and we just need to finish it off with a couple of dots of white on each one of the gems. Probably one of the easiest guardians to paint and also one of the most striking ones because of the color choices. Next on the painting list is now Yanden. We have finished both Ally Talk and Simhan, and now is the turn of these Eldar, which are basically the same color scheme as Ally Talk but inverted. So, the main color for the armor is obviously a Yanden yellow. I'm going to start by painting the helmet with Talaser Blue and then I'm gonna follow up once again with Game Wash. The idea is that because the blue is a little bit more difficult to manage to clean up afterwards, I'm gonna do this first. Both the shuriken, catapult and the helmet are gonna be painted first because they are darker colors than yellow. That's the reason behind that. So for the shuriken catapult, I use Griff Charger Gray and for the helmet, as I said, Talaser Blue and then Game Wash Blue. And for the armor, well, obviously, I'm gonna use Ian in yellow. Once again, it's very important that you are careful that the contrast paint, the inks and the washes do not pull too much in certain areas. Use your brush to dab the excess away and just put it in somewhere else. We're gonna paint that weapon with Black Templars, make sure that we shade it the way that we did with the other Elders. And after this, with my white paint mixed with ink, I'm going to paint all the gems and all those areas that I need to clean. With a little bit of, once again, Black Templars, I'm gonna shade the Shuriken Catapult in those areas that I don't really like the effect, how it finished off. And I'm going to use a little bit, very diluted, very careful, like a pink wash in the areas that I want to darken any further. The gems in this case we're gonna paint with Volupus Pink followed by Magus Purple and a last coat in the corner with Sheesh Purple. That's a mouthful to pronounce by the way, I'm not really sure if I'm saying the name correctly because who knows. <laughs> To finish the whole deal, we're gonna just put a couple of dots in those gems and in the visor in the helmet. And that's our Ijanden guy finished already. I left my favorite for last, this is Bieltan. These guys, they have a white armor with green helmets. On the third edition color scheme, the catapult is painted black and that's what I followed paint these guys. We're gonna start with a nice coat of Apothecary White and as you can see in the pot, in this case I actually had to use my Vortex mixer as well 
because the pigment was all decanted to the bottom of it. I'm gonna follow up with Griff Charger Grey to paint the shuriken weapon once again and I also put a little bit here and there just to make sure that I darken some areas that I want to be a little bit more contrasting in the armor. The l has a very striking color scheme with that nice clean white and the beautiful green details. The helmet is going to be painted with warp lining and also the shash and other details you can pick up with this color as well. For the weapon we're gonna darken it further with Black Templar as we did with all the other Guardians and then we're gonna move on onto cleaning up the armor. This is where we actually have to work a little bit on the details. You may know already that although it's called Apothecary White, it is not white at all. It's a very light grey, so in order to make these Guardians pop and the volumes to come out alive, we need to clean all the surfaces to make sure that everything is clean, round, popping. What the heck am I saying? Wait a minute now. What is that noise? Feels like I'm wearing nothing. <laughs> All right, let's 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 focus. Um, now we're gonna use once again Black Templar to paint that gun in the areas that we want to darken further. And now we can move on to the gems. The guy in here because he is painted white and green. Red is the perfect color to make it pop. So we're gonna start with Blood Angels red, Flesh Terrors red second, and then we're gonna finish off with Volupus pink. And as usual, we just need a dot of pure white on those corners, on the visor, in the helmet, and this guy is finished as well. Now this is the magic of editing. When I was filming this video, I hadn't finished painting the miniatures. Something happened in between this and the finishing stage. So stay tuned, let's see. It is right now uh, 6.20 p.m. I'm about to go to the gym. It's Monday. Editing video has taken my Saturday and my Sunday. The whole day, so no painting. I failed miserably <laughs> at what I wanted to achieve, but at the same time I, I got a video out. And I thought it was a bad video, but it seems that you guys liked it. So I guess that in my book is somehow a success. That's a tell. Right now I'm going to the gym first. I'm going to do this first before I go back home and start painting a little bit. See you later. Little did I know that this was going to be one of the last days that I was going to be able to go to the gym. We are back at it with the pandemic. COVID-19 is, well, affecting everyone in one way or another. Luckily for me, my whole family and my friends are healthy and safe, but not everybody can say the same thing about it. So for me, it's just a small nuisance. I hope all of you watching this are healthy, stay safe, and you know, in general, everything is all right in your lives. is going to be atrocious, but forgive me. 924, I'm checking the color schemes that we have here in this third edition Elder book. I need to finish these guys off. I'm going to do now, I guess, that's the final steps before I go to bed. Elder have such beautiful figures and they have aged usually quite decently. I mean, you can play with these miniatures nowadays and I don't think they will look out of place in an Elder army with a little bit more 
modern miniatures. Some sometimes I think the, the alternatives are not existence. You you have to use certain miniatures because they are the ones that they are. All specialist units, they are aged a little bit, but I still think that they look absolutely fantastic. Something that you cannot say about, I don't know, you know, those guys. Those ones. Go wonder which ones are the ones bringing money to Games Workshop. Yeah, <laughs> boy. You need to keep selling them. You need to keep selling them, man. When I was making this video, I had no idea of how old some of the Elder miniatures actually are in the current range. I do have an idea because I live through those years, but because I don't keep up much with the current trends on 40k and other things, I had no idea that some of these miniatures are still in use as they were back created back in the 90s. Like literally, they were from the early 90s mid 90s and they still look like this they actually are very good figures but i think Ace workshop needs to you know get a little bit love for this outstanding race if i ever do collect an army for 40k it's probably gonna be elder and it's because they are easy to paint very fun and they look outstanding Make sure that you subscribe to the channel and activate notifications because the next coming video on this series of how I get my pile of shame out of the way will be probably published by the end of this week or early next week. My name is Miguel, thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Un beso, bye!